Season one of Riverdale introduces a group of high school students in the titular town of Riverdale, returning to class in the fall after a very eventful summer. Archie Andrews is a sophomore juggling a job at his father Fred's construction company, his commitment to the school's football team, and his growing passion for music. He has long harbored a love for seemingly perfect Betty Cooper, who reciprocates Archie's feelings. But complicating their would-be romance is the new student Veronica Lodge, who quickly strikes up a tight friendship with Betty and a mutual attraction with Archie. Veronica moved to Riverdale with her mother Hermione, following her father Hiram's arrest for embezzlement. As Archie and Veronica begin a romance, so do their parents, Fred and Hermione. The new best friends Betty and Veronica then join the cheerleading squad, led by the entitled popular girl Cheryl Blossom. But Cheryl's life is a lot more complicated than it seems, as her twin brother Jason is found murdered at the lake. After learning of a long history of hatred between the Cooper and Blossom families, Betty takes it upon herself to investigate Jason's murder. She teams up with Archie's best friend Jughead Jones to solve the case. They learn that Jason had been in a forbidden relationship with Betty's sister Polly, who is now seven months pregnant and kept captive at a home for troubled youth known as the Sisters of the Quiet Mercy. They help Polly escape, who then decides to live with the Blossoms to uncover more secrets behind Jason's death. Betty and Polly's parents, Alice and Hal, have their marriage fractured when Alice discovers that Hal had tried to pressure their daughter into getting an abortion, leading to her running away. Alice kicks Hal out of their family home in support of her daughter. Throughout their investigation, Betty and Jughead develop romantic feelings for each other and eventually begin a relationship. But things start to go wrong when Jughead discovers that his good-for-nothing absent father FP, the leader of a local gang known as the Serpents, may have been involved in Jason's death. Jason became a drug dealer for the Serpents before his death in an attempt to make enough money to run away with Polly to start a new life with their baby. When the police raid FP's trailer, they find a gun and arrest him for Jason's murder. Betty and her journalist mother Alice catch Hal destroying evidence that the Cooper and Blossom bloodlines are directly connected, making Polly and Jason's relationship incestuous. Although this raises Betty's suspicions of her father, she and Jughead discover that Jason's true murderer was in fact his own father, Clifford Blossom, who killed his own son after Jason discovered that Clifford was also in the illegal drug business. With the truth revealed, FP is absolved of Jason's murder, and Jughead is invited to join the Serpents. When the police go to arrest Clifford, they find him dead. Distraught over learning of her father's secrets, Cheryl Blossom burns down their family mansion. Betty learns from Alice that she has a secret brother, fathered by FP, who was forced by Hal to be given up for adoption while he and Alice were in high school. Veronica learns that her criminal father Hiram has been released from prison and is coming to Riverdale, causing Fred and Hermione to end their relationship. And as the season comes to a close, Fred is shot and left bleeding out after a robbery gone wrong. Are you having trouble finding the final season of Riverdale streaming online? In the US, only the first six seasons are available to stream on your favorite streaming service, and it could take a year or more for them to add season seven. Fortunately, other countries around the world release episodes of Riverdale season seven online as they air. And with this video sponsored NordVPN, I can watch the series finale of Riverdale online right now without having to sign up for a new streaming service. With NordVPN, you can change your internet's virtual location and browse streaming libraries from different countries. Different regions have different libraries. So if you switch your location to somewhere like the UK, you can watch every episode of Riverdale right now. No new subscription service and no more year-long waits. And there's a lot of other great shows you can watch on your current streaming service in different regions that aren't available in the US. Like The Office, Friends, It's Always Sunny, Rick and Morty, and so much more. So don't sign up for another streaming service, sign up for NordVPN. And the streaming thing is just the cherry on top of all of NordVPN's other features. They protect and encrypt your personal and private data so you can go online with no risk of annoying ads, trackers, or malware. It's also the fastest VPN on the market so you don't have to worry about internet speeds or throttling. So sign up for my exclusive deal at nordvpn.com slash chilltv for four free months when you sign up for a new plan. It's risk-free, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee, link is in the description, now let's get back to the recap. In Season 2 of Riverdale, Fred survives the shooting, but the town quickly realizes he was the target of a mass serial killer known as the Black Hood. 
The Black Hood targets Riverdale residents that they deem as sinners, including a teacher who previously had an illicit affair with Archie and a drug dealer known as the Sugar Man. To combat the Black Hood, Archie forms a vigilante group known as the Red Circle. Meanwhile, Polly Cooper flees town to protect her newborn twins from the rampaging serial killer. The Black Hood discovers Polly's location and blackmails Betty to do his bidding in order to protect her sister. Eventually, the Black Hood is shot and killed by Riverdale Sheriff Keller, and the killer is revealed to be a man named Joseph Svensson, whose entire family was murdered by a serial killer known as the Riverdale Reaper decades prior. Hiram Lodge arrives in Riverdale and quickly has a hand in various businesses across town, forming alliances with both Riverdale's Mayor McCoy and the Serpents. Archie is recruited by FBI agent Adams to get closer to Hiram and find evidence of his criminal behavior. As Archie grows closer to Hiram, Hiram becomes a trusted mentor and confidant. When Archie discovers that Hiram is a high-ranking mobster, the FBI puts even more pressure on Archie obtaining incriminating evidence. Feeling loyalty to Hiram, Archie confesses his involvement with the FBI. But it is then revealed that the FBI agent was just a test of loyalty, which Archie passed, and he is now accepted into the Lodge crime family, run by Hiram and Hermione. To strengthen her family's power, Hermione runs for mayor. And to prevent the villainous lodges from controlling the town, Fred runs against her. Archie eventually realizes that Hiram is trying to drive a wedge between himself and his father, and so he ends his partnership with Hiram to remain loyal to Fred. Meanwhile, Jughead begins attending Southside High School, a lower-class school predominantly attended by teenagers from the Serpent Gang, including Tony and Fangs. The Serpents, led by Jughead's father FP, grow increasingly antagonistic and violent toward a rival gang known as the Ghoulies. Eventually, Hiram Lodge strikes a land deal that shuts down Southside High, sending Jughead and the Serpents to school at Riverdale High, where they are ostracized by the more upper-class students. Hiram also buys the trailer park that many of the Serpents live in, evicting them from their homes. As Jughead investigates Hiram, he discovers that the Lodges intend on consolidating power in the South Side and using the high school as a prison. Meanwhile, Claudius Blossom, Clifford's twin brother, arrives in Riverdale to help Blossom matriarch Penelope get her family in line. After discovering that Cheryl is bisexual, they force her into conversion therapy at the Sisters of Quiet Mercy. Veronica, Cheryl's crush Tony, and Sheriff Keller's son Kevin rescue Cheryl, who joins the Serpents and vows to get revenge on her family. Feeling liberated from her family, Cheryl stars in a school musical fittingly based on the horror classic Carrie. Claudius and Penelope then form an alliance with Hiram and Hermione. Hiram becomes ruthless in taking over Southside and making Hermione mayor, even exposing her and Fred's affair in the local papers to ruin Fred's image as a man of family values, and hiring a shooter to attack the mayoral debate. Hermione begins to resent Hiram's schemes and helps Veronica block the sale of the last piece of property Hiram needs in Southside. Meanwhile, Betty Cooper helps her mother Alice find her long-lost son Chick and brings him to live with them in Riverdale. But this quickly goes wrong, as Betty discovers that the man living with her and Alice is not the real chick, but an imposter who murdered him. The Black Hood then returns to Riverdale, revealed to have framed Joseph Svensson. Seeking revenge for her real brother, Betty delivers Chick to the Black Hood, and eventually discovers that the serial killer is in fact her disgraced father Hal, whose own father was the original Riverdale Reaper. Betty has her father arrested, and for his failure at originally bringing down the Black Hood, Sheriff Keller is fired, after which Hiram has him replaced with his loyal ally Minetta. As the season comes to a close, FP steps down as the Serpent's leader and names Jughead as their new king. Hermione wins the election to become mayor of Riverdale, and Archie wins the election to become student body president. But his celebration is short-lived, as Hiram frames him for murder and has the newly installed Sheriff Minetta arrest him. In Season 3 of Riverdale, Archie is sentenced to two years in juvenile detention, where he is constantly confronted by incarcerated members of the Ghoulies. 
Hiram, having successfully framed Archie out of revenge for both Archie and Veronica's betrayals, then goes about his plans to take over all of Riverdale. As Archie begins to face more and more danger in prison, his friends help him escape, while Veronica finds evidence on her parents' computer of Sheriff Mineta coercing witnesses into accusing Archie. This evidence forces Mineta to be removed as sheriff and exonerates Archie. Despite this, Archie decides to not return to Riverdale, where he would never be safe from Hiram's wrath, and instead breaks up with Veronica and pursues a quieter life elsewhere. First, he accompanies Jughead to meet his mother Gladys and sister Jellybean, then goes to live in a secluded cabin. And with Minetta no longer serving as sheriff, Hermione appoints FP to take his place. Meanwhile, many students of Riverdale High begin to be killed in ritualistic murders after playing a game known as Griffins and Gargoyles. Betty and Jughead investigate the game, which becomes addicting to the players who all want to ascend and impress the Gargoyle King. The duo discover that Alice, Fred, Penelope, Hiram, Hermione, and FP had all discovered the game together when they were in high school in the 90s, but had promised to keep it a secret and protect the town from its violent nature. And it's not just the Gargoyle King that is terrorizing Riverdale, as students begin succumbing to violent seizures. The seizures are caused by the town's water supply being tainted by a drug called Fizzle Rock, made by Hiram and Claudius Blossom in Southside High. Claudius is murdered by Penelope for his involvement while Hiram uses all of this to have Riverdale quarantined from the outside world, giving him the power he needed to take over the town and turn it into his own kingdom. As Veronica seeks a way to bring down her villainous father, she grows closer to fellow student Reggie Mantle, and the two develop a romance. Meanwhile, while living in seclusion, Archie is brutally attacked by a wild bear. Surviving the attack inspires Archie to return to Riverdale and save the town from Hiram's villainy. While attempting to confront Hiram, he finds the villain has already been shot by a mystery attacker. Instead of letting Hiram die, Archie chooses to save his life, proving himself to be more benevolent than his evil former mentor. In appreciation for Archie sparing his life, Hiram calls a truce and allows Archie to return to Riverdale and live in peace. Veronica tasks Jughead with uncovering Hiram's shooter, and he eventually discovers that Hermione had been having an affair with the disgraced Mineta and orchestrated him shooting Hiram and framing FP. Hermione explains to Jughead she wanted to kill Hiram for revenge for putting their daughter Veronica in danger. To tie up any loose ends, Hermione murders Mineta and ends her marriage to Hiram. With her father's position weakening, Veronica opens her own speakeasy and begins conducting business with Hiram's associates. Archie then goads Hiram into a boxing match in which if Archie wins, Hiram must leave Riverdale forever, but if Hiram wins, he can fully claim Riverdale for himself. During the boxing match, as Hiram is about to defeat Archie, FP arrives to reveal the match was just a distraction, as Veronica had tricked Hiram into sanctioning illegal betting for the fight. And so, Hiram is finally arrested. And don't worry, even amidst all of the chaos around town, the students of Riverdale High still manage to put on a massive musical production of the cult classic Heathers. Meanwhile, a cult known as The Farm begins attracting new recruits from throughout Riverdale. Alice, Polly, Cheryl, and Kevin are just some of the residents who are brainwashed into joining the cult, which promises to heal them of any pain and grief. Betty becomes determined to take down the cult and its leaders, Edgar and Evelyn, and teams up with Tony and her new gang known as the Pretty Poisons. Tony helps Cheryl escape the farm, while Edgar captures Betty after she discovers his scheme to harvest his loyal followers' organs, and then attempts to harvest Betty's brain. Betty is saved by Penelope Blossom, where she is then brought to the Blossom's estate alongside Archie, Jughead, and Veronica. Penelope reveals herself to be behind the Griffins and Gargoyles game, and reveals her accomplices, an escape from prison Hal Cooper, aka the Black Hood, and the Gargoyle King, revealed to be Hal's new devoted protege, Chick. Penelope forces the group of friends to play one final game of Griffins and Gargoyles, in which they would have to survive the night or die trying. During the game, Penelope kills Hal, while Archie and Veronica declare their love for each other. As morning approaches, the pretty poisons and the serpents help rescue Archie, Jughead, Veronica, and Betty, and then they all head to the farm to liberate its brainwashed followers. But upon their arrival, all they find is Kevin, who claims the other followers, including Alice and Polly, have ascended to a higher existence. As the season comes to a close, Chick is arrested, Penelope flees the police, the incarcerated Hiram orchestrates Hermione's arrest for the attempt on his life, and Betty and Jughead meet the real Charles Blossom. Charles reveals that he is an FBI agent who was secretly working with Alice to take down the farm from the inside. 
Season 4 of Riverdale opens with the tragic death of Fred Andrews in a hit-and-run car accident. The entire town rallies around Archie as he mourns his father and comes to peace with his killer. But the tragic deaths don't stop there, as flash-forwards reveal that Archie, Betty, and Veronica will soon be arrested for the murder of their friend Jughead. Hiram and Hermione are both released from prison and rekindle their romance, frustrating their daughter Veronica. As Hiram becomes the new mayor of Riverdale, Veronica steals his secret rum recipe and starts a rum business with Cheryl, that they run out of Penelope Blossom's former brothel. Meanwhile, Cheryl begins going a little crazy. She takes Jason's body and hides it in her basement constantly having conversations with it and believing Jason's spirit haunted the estate. Cheryl also learns from her grandmother that she was originally a twin who consumed her brother Julian in her mother's womb. When Cheryl's sinister Aunt Cricket and Uncle Bedford arrive to force her into signing over the Blossom family business, Bedford attacks Cheryl, forcing Tony to murder him. Cheryl's declining mental state eventually leads to her being removed as captain of the cheer squad. But she is eventually able to accept and cope with her trauma by giving Jason a Viking funeral. Betty teams up with her long-lost brother Charles to take down the farm once and for all. The duo help snap Kevin out of his farm brainwashing and use his knowledge to track the farm to a nearby hotel. There, Betty rescues her mother Alice, who in turn kills the farm's villainous leader Edgar. Following the successful mission, Betty and Kevin decide to join the junior FBI training program. Unfortunately, Betty is unaware that Charles is actually working with Chick, revealed to be his secret lover, to take down the Cooper family from the inside. Meanwhile, Jughead gets accepted into a prestigious school named Stonewall Prep. While there, he develops a rivalry with his hostile new roommate, Brett. Jughead also discovers that his grandfather, Forsyth, had actually created his favorite murder mystery book series, The Baxter Brothers, only to have the story stolen by its supposed author, Francis DuPont. When Jughead's writing teacher, Mr. Chipping, mysteriously dies, Jughead joins the teacher's secret society of Quill and Skulls to investigate. Jughead and Betty discover that many of the secret society have died under suspicious circumstances. Unfortunately, Jughead's investigation is cut short when Brett frames him for plagiarizing his work, and threatens to release a sex tape between Jughead and Betty that Brett had secretly filmed. Jughead is forced to leave Stonewall Prep and return to Riverdale High. Meanwhile, Edgar's wife Evelyn begins using secret code words to activate formerly brainwashed farm members into performing violent acts. As Betty discovers a connection between Chipping's death and his villainous students Donna and Brett, Donna activates Betty's programming, and when Archie and Veronica find the brainwashed Betty, she has murdered Jughead. As the police investigate Jughead's murder, Archie and Veronica help Betty realize that she didn't actually murder Jughead, but is instead being framed. As Betty grieves her boyfriend's death, Archie comforts her, leading to the two sharing a kiss. But this all turns out to be a ruse to distract Donna and Brett and get them to lower their guards, as Jughead is revealed to be alive and well. Together, Jughead and Betty expose Donna, Brett, and Francis DuPont, who had worked with Mr. Chipping to orchestrate the murders of Stonewall Prep students, to serve as the inspiration for new Baxter Brothers books. Although the gang is finally safely back together at Riverdale High, the core friendship is tested when Archie and Betty continue to pursue their romantic feelings for each other behind Veronica and Jughead's backs. But complicated romantic feelings become the least of the group's problems when the town starts receiving videotapes from a mysterious figure known as the Auteur, who is reenacting and recreating various murders from Riverdale's past. Oh yeah, and also Kevin, Reggie, Tony, and Fang start a business selling videos of themselves getting tickled. In Season 5 of Riverdale, a new series of murders sweeps the town, with many of the victims being Stonewall Prep students involved in Jughead's attempted murder. While Archie and his friends first believe the auteur to be behind the killings, the group soon discovers that the killer is actually Charles, a serial killer seeking revenge for his half-brother Jughead. And then the group discovers that the auteur is in fact Jughead's younger sister Jellybean, who hoped to create a compelling mystery that would keep her brother in town instead of of going off to college. To help better raise Jelly Bean, FP decides to move with her out of Riverdale. With Riverdale seemingly safe once again, the high school students graduate and say their emotional goodbyes, promising to stay in touch as they head off to start their own lives. Seven years later, Archie Andrews returns to Riverdale after a stint in the army and finds his hometown to be a near wasteland. Hiram, alongside his new right-hand man Reggie, have orchestrated a complete collapse of Riverdale to bolster their plans of turning Southside into a new profitable town known as Sodale. The duo have gone 
gone so far as having Riverdale becoming unincorporated as a town. Seeing Riverdale in such a poor state, Archie calls all of his friends to come and save their home. In the past seven years, Veronica has married a man named Chad, who resents her ambitions and wants her to become a simple housewife. Betty is an FBI trainee suffering from PTSD due to a past mission gone wrong. Tony has remained in town and is now pregnant, serving as a surrogate mother to the newly engaged Kevin and Fangs. And Jughead is now a drug addict and alcoholic writer forced to evade loan sharks he owes a lot of money to. When Hiram and Reggie try to have Riverdale High shut down, Cheryl returns and funds the school to remain open, while Archie and his friends become teachers to keep the school sufficiently staffed. In their efforts to return Riverdale to its former glory, Archie restarts the football team while Cheryl and Tony reluctantly reunite after seven years apart to lead the Vixen's cheerleading squad together. As Veronica Lodge makes power moves to thwart Hiram and return Riverdale to its former glory, Chad becomes even more jealous and vindictive. When Veronica files for divorce, Hiram manipulates Chad into attempting to murder her, but Veronica flips the tables on Chad and kills him. As Reggie realizes the true evil nature of Hiram's plans, he betrays his mentor and allies with Veronica, leading to the two rekindling their romance and making plans to open their own casino. Kevin Keller realizes that he isn't ready to commit to a marriage with Fangs, and the two break up. Fangs and Tony then fall in love, and Tony gives birth to their son Anthony. To help Kevin cope with his feelings, Cheryl Blossom invites him to join a new ministry that her seemingly reformed mother Penelope has started. Cheryl and Kevin soon take over the ministry, worshipping Mother Nature Gaia, while Cheryl begins to believe that she is a powerful saint who is aided by the spirit of her brother Jason. When Cheryl discovers a rich deposit of palladium under her family property, she pays Archie and the Andrews Construction Company to mine it. Cheryl secretly believes that the palladium is a bridge between the the physical and spiritual worlds, and harnessing the material would grant her power over both. Meanwhile, Jughead's alcoholism and drug addiction ruins his relationships with his friends and irreparably damages his writing career. When Jughead hears tales of extraterrestrials known as Mothmen, and even has his own encounters with the supposed aliens, he is left confused over whether the experiences are real or drug-induced. Riverdale resident Tabitha helps Jughead battle his addictions and make amends with his friends, leading to the two developing a romance. Meanwhile, Betty Cooper begins looking into the disappearances of several women, including her sister Polly, along the lonely highway. While interviewing junkyard owner Old Man Dreyfus for information, he claims that the women must have been abducted by the Mothmen. Betty resists these claims and instead begins looking into truckers who frequent the highway. Eventually, Betty and Jughead discover that Old Man Dreyfus is a member of a group of inbred blossoms who have been living in the forest for more than two generations. They had started and passed down the false stories of the Mothmen for years, using it as a distraction to hunt and kill women on the lonely highway. Dreyfus is arrested for his crimes, and Betty sadly discovers that her sister Polly has been murdered. As the season comes to a close, Betty officially becomes an FBI agent and opens a field office in Riverdale. Archie forms a council to help reincorporate Riverdale and return it to its former glory. Veronica, with the help of Reggie and their friends, finally takes down her father Hiram and exiles him from the town. Cheryl discovers that her ancestor Abigail was burned at the stake for being an accused witch by Archie Jughead and Betty's ancestors. In death, Abigail cursed the town, leading to the non-stop treachery in the decades to follow. When Archie Jughead and Betty refuse to atone for their ancestors' actions, Cheryl secedes her family estate Thornhill from Riverdale, then uses Abigail Abigail's journal to place a curse on the trio. Unaware of the curse, Archie and Betty rekindle their high school romance, only to be interrupted by a bomb planted by Hiram in his final act of villainy. In Season 6 of Riverdale, things go completely off the rails. Archie and Betty survive the explosion and find themselves in a strange alternate universe known as River Vale, where the supernatural now runs rampant. To atone for their town's generations of sins and lift a supposed curse, Cheryl orchestrates the ritual sacrifice of Archie and cuts out his heart. When a vengeful spirit known as La Llorona begins tormenting the town, even attempting to drown baby Anthony, Tony sacrifices her soul to the spirit. The devil himself even shows up in River Vale 
to entice its residents to sell him their souls, and ends up dragging Reggie to hell. Eventually, Jughead finds a series of comic books detailing the story of the Riverdale universe, which abruptly ends with Hiram's bomb going off. Jughead realizes that River Vale and Riverdale are two separate universes that have begun to collapse and merge into each other, and manages to save both universes by recreating events in River Vale from Riverdale, then takes up the mantle of writing the comic storyline of Riverdale, and his first act as the story's author is making sure Betty and Archie survive the bomb's explosion. Back in Riverdale and surviving the explosion, Archie and Betty realize that a side effect of the universe's temporarily merging is that many of the town's residents develop superpowers. Archie is indestructible, Betty can sense evil people's auras, Veronica produces poisonous venom, Jughead can read minds, Cheryl can manipulate fire, and Tabitha can time travel, even venturing back to 1968 and trying to stop the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. The group must band together and use their powers to defeat Percival Pickens, a magical sorcerer from River Vale who has arrived in Riverdale with the intent on destroying the entire town. But the town's battle with Percival isn't their only problem. As FBI agent Betty pursues and kills the trash bag killer, Cheryl traps the powerful magical spirit of her ancestor Abigail in a doll, Kevin coldly pursues full custody of Anthony from Tony and Fangs, and Veronica finally murders her villainous father Hiram, then opens up an illegal casino of her own with Reggie. As the battle against Percival comes to a head, the evil sorcerer brings a series of plagues to Riverdale, culminating in the deaths of every firstborn child, including Archie, Jughead, Tony, and Fangs. A teenage witch named Sabrina comes to town and teaches Cheryl how to resurrect her fallen friends by harnessing the power of the Phoenix. Using this power, Cheryl not only brings back Archie, Jughead, Tony, and Fangs, but also the deceased Jason and Polly. Tabitha then uses her time powers to age up Anthony into an adult, theorizing that because he didn't die with the other firstborns, he was immortal. And while Anthony is immortal, he fails at defeating Percival. Ultimately, Jughead manages to enter Percival's mind and distract him, as the rest of Jughead's allies stab Percival's body in the real world. They then deliver Percival to the devil in Rivervale, but not before he puts one final curse on Riverdale, trapping all of Riverdale's residents in town and sending Bailey's Comet hurtling toward them to destroy them all. Fearing their impending death, Betty takes the opportunity to propose to Archie, who gladly accepts. Meanwhile, Tabitha uses her time-traveling powers to envision a future with Jughead, where they have kids and grow old together. Fortunately, the residents of Riverdale are able to transfer their powers to Cheryl, giving her the strength necessary to destroy the comet and save them all. But upon the comet's destruction, Riverdale is transported back to 1955, where Archie and his friends are once again high school students, and only Jughead has retained his memories of their crazy experiences together in the future. In Season 7 of Riverdale, the time-traveling present-day version of Tabitha visits Jughead in 1955, warning him that the comet did in fact destroy Riverdale in their future. Tabitha promises to stop the comet and bring her friends back to the future, but to do so, she must leave and Jughead must lose his memories like the rest of his friends and live life as a high schooler in the 1950s. Archie Andrews is a basketball star who secretly wants to pursue his passion for poetry. Archie quickly finds himself in a bit of a love triangle between his neighbor and childhood crush Betty and the new girl from Hollywood, Veronica. When Reggie, a star athlete from a neighboring town, moves in with the Andrews and joins the Riverdale High School basketball team, he and Archie develop a strong friendship and begin to question their sexualities, eventually leading to them having a threesome together and professing their love for each other. In turn, Archie quits the basketball team and pursues poetry full-time. Betty starts her own newsletter that grows in popularity, leading to her writing a book. Meanwhile, Veronica buys the Babylonium Theater and develops aspirations of being a film director. Betty and Veronica mutually decide to put their attraction for Archie behind them and instead focus on their friendship with each other. Fangs begins a relationship with a classmate named Midge, and after she gets pregnant, Fangs becomes a rock star to impress Midge's parents and earn their blessing to be with their daughter. Kevin, Cheryl, and Tony 
Tony all struggle with being secretly gay in the regressive 1950s. Kevin begins secretly dating a new student named Clay while also discovering that his father, Sheriff Keller, is in a secret relationship of his own with Archie's uncle, Frank. Cheryl's twin brother in the 1950s timeline is now Julian, a bully who helps enact his parents Clifford and Penelope's villainous schemes, including pressuring Cheryl to date a man instead of Tony. But Cheryl pushes back against her family's backwards views and begins publicly dating Tony, vowing to bring down the villainous blossoms once and for all. As the 1950s versions of Tabitha and Jughead grow closer together, just as their future counterparts did, Tabitha decides to tour the country with the mother of Emmett Till to promote social justice. Jughead then begins writing comic books, which Riverdale High School counselor Dr. Werther's claims are responsible for inspiring a recent string of murders at the hands of a new serial killer known as the Milkman. Mr. Werther's, not wanting comic books to corrupt innocent young minds, bans them from Riverdale. As Jughead begins investigating the Milkman, he and Cheryl discover that Penelope and Clifford Blossom are actually the masterminds behind the Milkman killers, as they are secretly Russian spies who will have anyone murdered that comes close to uncovering their secret. Following this revelation, Penelope and Clifford are arrested, while an embarrassed Dr. Werther's leaves Riverdale. As the season comes to a close, Jughead writes an interracial romance comic book, detailing a love story in the midst of a comet about to destroy the world. Jughead is then visited by the future Tabitha, who restores his memories and reveals that all of the positive social changes they've made in the world are helping to stabilize the multiverse. Unfortunately, to make sure the multiverse remains safely intact, Tabitha is unable to return Jughead and his friends to their original timeline in the present. Tabitha helps restore everyone's memories, though at Veronica's request, she erases all of their worst moments. As the entire group heads to the Babylonium to watch all of their best memories together, Jughead and Betty decide to hold on to all of their memories, even the bad ones. Tabitha reveals to Jughead that they are not destined to be together, and so, she and Jughead share a final kiss goodbye. In the series finale of Riverdale, the story returns to the present day, where an 86-year-old Betty is the last remaining member of the gang still alive. She is visited by the angel of Jughead, who helps her relive one final day in the past with all of her friends. And so, Betty is taken back to her high school graduation day, where Jughead reveals the fates of all of her friends. Fangs tragically dies after his tour bus crashes, Kevin and Clay grow old together, Reggie becomes a professional basketball player before returning to become Riverdale High's new basketball coach, and Cheryl and Tony live happily ever after. Meanwhile, Archie, Jughead, Betty, and Veronica spent all of their senior year unsure of who would end up with who romantically, and so they swap partners every day in an open polyamorous relationship. After graduation, Veronica moves back to Hollywood to pursue a film career and wins two Oscars. Archie continues working in construction and writes poetry on the side, living a long and happy life with his wife and kids. Jughead and Betty both become successful authors and magazine founders, but neither ever marry. Betty does eventually adopt a daughter, and in the present, as her granddaughter takes her back for one final trip to Riverdale, Betty passes away peacefully. In death, Betty joins her friends in the afterlife, where they will be young and beautiful high schoolers in Riverdale forever.